Okay, so this week we're going to talk about MIDI and basic music production. Let's start with MIDI. A lot of you know what MIDI is, but let's just go through some of the history about it. A bit of an overview about MIDI. MIDI is a digital encoding of a performance. If I was to play the piano, there's different parameters that I play when I hit a keyboard, whether it's down pressure, what notes are being played, how long I hold them, and how fast I release the keys. All of those performance parameters were being encoded in a digital format. I could take a keyboard and I could play it and the computer could actually digitally record what my performance was. And then later I could go ahead and take that performance, send it to a synthesizer, and have the synthesizer play back my performance with whatever sound I chose. A piano, or whether it's a string sound, or whether it's a Rhodes piano sound, or whether it's a vocal sound, whatever kind of sound generator I had, it could take that performance and then play it with that specific sound. So it gave you a lot of freedom in a lot of ways. I could sit at my computer with a keyboard and I could program drums and then go to bass and then go to main keyboards and then go to all these other string patches and so on and create an entire song if I had enough sound generators to play each performance. And then I could go ahead and decide exactly what sound I wanted, what worked best for each sound element. Let's talk about the basics of MIDI to start with. Okay, so the basics of MIDI MIDI stands for Musical Instrument Digital Interface. As I mentioned, it was a way of encoding a performance in digital language. Protocol that allows digital devices to be connected and communicate. MIDI has 16 different channels that you can broadcast and receive on, all through the same cable, all at once. Omni mode broadcasts to all channels and receives all channels. So a synthesizer or a sound generator could be set to Omni and it would receive all the channels and perform all those channels. Or you could set it to channel 1 and whatever MIDI information was on channel 1 would go to that sound generator and be generated for that. Right, so you get 16 different channels. MIDI became the standard in 1983. MIDI carries out event messages about notation, pitch, velocity, all of these performance parameters and MIDI controls parameters <coughs> such as volume, vibrato, auto panning, clocking signals, synchronization of tempo, sound generation, all of these things can be encoded in a digital format and sent to a synthesizer. In the 80s we had individual sound generators, individual synthesizers, and then it developed into rack mount synthesizers or sound generators. The fact that now you have in your digital workstation you've got sound generators that are plugins. So you just put it on your channel, it will play whatever's MIDI on that channel. So MIDI is an 8-bit word plus two metadata bits, the first and the last, define the word and on and off information. So MIDI has five types of messages, channel voice, channel mode, system common, system real-time, and system exclusive. Let's talk about each one of those five types of messages that MIDI can transmit and receive. Channel voice transmits real-time performance data. That's the main thrust of how MIDI started. Channel mode transmits omni mode, mono mode, or poly mode. Mono mode would be a single note played at one time. So if you were to play one note and then transition to another note, and for a split second you were playing both notes, it would only play one note at a time, period. That's it. The old Moog synthesizers were monophonic like that as well. Poly mode means you get to play multiple notes at the same time more like a piano would play chords. Omni mode, obviously, as I mentioned before, grabs and plays back all channels all at the same time. System common mode transmits MIDI timecode data. MIDI also had its own internal timecode and was used for synchronization, but more than that, system real-time mode transmitted MIDI clock, which actively sends data to put you in song position. So let's just say I was in the middle of a song and I hit start on the sequencer, which was playing back all the MIDI information. The synthesizers would know at what bar you were at. In the early days of MIDI, we didn't have that kind of synchronization capability. And every time we wanted to play the song, we had to start at the top of the song, which was really difficult and time consuming. What we used to do is we used to program this stuff, get the right sounds for the track, and then print them all to tape. So it was actually on tape, and it was the synth sounds printed to an analog format, and then we'd leave the digital MIDI world behind. 
in your DAWs today, many times you leave the MIDI as MIDI. That can still be a problem if you're going from studio to studio and the studio you're going to doesn't have the same plug-in sound generators. So you got the perfect string sound, but unfortunately the studio you're actually working in this week doesn't have the same plug-in for that same sound. And the last type of message, system exclusive. It controls equipment. Each manufacturer has its own system exclusive messages, unique identifiers for each specific piece of equipment. It's not as general of a language. It's really geared towards specifics. And so the manufacturer can program specific system exclusive information into the gear you're using so that your MIDI system exclusive can control that specific piece of gear. Let me give you an example. If I was a guitar player and I had a rack mount piece of outboard gear for delays and reverbs, I could use a MIDI control pedal and control system changes in that piece of gear, which wasn't even a sound generator. It was an actual piece of outboard gear, but it used MIDI to control the parameter changes. So if I wanted to make the next song a longer delay, I could step on my MIDI controller and the outboard piece of gear would change its settings, its presets. You can also use system exclusive messages to control things like levels and mutes and pannings and solos on recording consoles. In terms of automating an actual recording console, it's really handy. You can send synchronization information. So whether you're synchronizing a reel-to-reel -reel analog tape machine or um, a digital machine, back in the day we had ADATs and DATs and all that, and it could be controlled by MIDI. So MIDI could tell it at what time position to be at and how fast to move tape. It can also control sequencers, can control computers. It can send information that controls all sorts of pieces of gear in the studio. But not only that, it's handy for if you're doing a live performance and you want to control lights and so on, you can use MIDI information to send messages to the light controllers as to what colors to be, where to be in position, and what to do. So. It's a really great control language, and so that's why it became so much more widespread than just in the musical sound generation. But the concept is really smart. So if you've got a performance on a keyboard, you can capture all the performance parameters, or not even only on a keyboard. On a breath controller, it would be like a wind instrument. You could capture all of those parameters of the performance and then send that to a sound module and have it regenerated at another time. So in a sense, it's like recording audio in the analog world or digital world, but it's not exactly the same because what you're doing is you're recording the parameters of the performance, not necessarily the sound associated with it, so that at another time you can choose exactly what sound to use. Here's a good example of the early days of MIDI. So this is what a MIDI connector looks like. MIDI travels in one direction, so the backs of gear always had MIDI in, MIDI out, and MIDI through. MIDI through just passes the MIDI to the next piece of gear. So if you had multiple pieces of gear, you could daisy chain them together and send a message on channel 1 to the first piece of gear, channel 2 to the second piece of gear, channel 3 to the third piece of gear. So you could delegate the first piece of gear to be your drum sounds, the second to be your bass sounds, the third to be your string sounds, and so on. So this is the MIDI connector, and this gives you a little understanding of how it all worked. Pin 2 is ground, which is the center pin on the 5-pin DIN connector. Pin 4 is the plus signal. Pin 5 is the minus signal. The interesting thing is that there's also pin 1 and pin 3, which are on the far ends of the connector. Extra voltages sometimes are carried on that to power pieces of gear to do specific things. Back in the 80s, I remember this, Roland used to use those pins for their synchronization, for their code. It wasn't standardized yet. Yamaha would use different pins. Roland would use different pins. Sometimes if you had a Roland cable that came with your Roland synthesizer, it wouldn't work with a Yamaha piece of gear, even though it was still a five-pin DIN connector. And so it was really confusing. You had to label which cables worked with which pieces of gear until they standardized it in 1999, worldwide standardized for all companies.